Legend has it that Lake Bossong Chui was discovered by a foreign hunter when he shot an antelope and followed its blood trails to this lake. A natural source of water, this lake is home to 22 communities. Tell me more about this community. When was it started? Lake Bossong Chui, it doesn't flow to any river. No river comes in, just from underneath. So okay. there's no sources anywhere, only rainwater. Oh. What's significant about this community? Here, yeah, there's nothing that we can do apart from fishing and farming. But the tourism, those who come here, help us. Do you have any struggles that you're facing at the moment as a community? We are facing so many, so many, because here, not all the time that you can get a fish. It comes on seas now. There's no job here. We have teenage pregnancies. People don't go to school waiting for tourism to beg them on its own. As you get a good governance, maybe... Good governance? So in your opinion, what's good governance? Nanadu is a good government. Okay, so why did you vote for him? Well, formerly I was an organizer at NDC, but I was thinking about my children. I have a, a small girl, about 12 years, that's my last one, about how they are preaching about the free education, uh, job creating, what I found interesting is that you said you were a former NDC organiser, yes, but you voted for MPP this election. Yes, so why the change of mind? I supported and follow NDC, NDC, NDC. But I got to know it won't help me. Why? So I must to change my mind. Because we are, we are moving forward. How do you think the new government will impact your life and the lives of the people in this community? Maybe it will benefit my children. But then maybe they complete a school, they will have a job. And do you think it will benefit you in any way? Yes. I'm some impression here. I think it will increase my pay so that my pay can reach me. I used to go and borrow money before my pay will reach me. But I know free education will help me because my pay will be with me. Sometimes people complete a school. They used to go to big towns to go and sell chewing gums, polythene bags, papers and so on. Once you're supposed to go to school, there's no money. And what change would you like to see within the community? Well, we like to see the changes of the education sector so that somebody can go to secondary level. Once it's free, um, it's somebody can send, I can send my, my, my children to that place. Just found out that this lake has actually reduced in size over the last 25 years by about 20 metres due to direct sunlight and also activities of the community such as cutting down the trees along the river banks. Who are cutting down the trees? One, there's a, uh, a locks here. I will take my money to go to Rita to go and buy wood to support the, uh, my building that I was building. So if the community know this, are they doing anything to prevent that? Well, you see, the community here, there's no forestry commission around here. We are far away from here, so unless somebody call them to come and have a look, nobody will do that. Surely you want to put measures in place to save the lake? Yes. But they're still cutting down the trees to build yes. that house? Yes. So is there any other way, an alternative, for them to stop Just cutting to down the trees? Just understand ourselves. And how do you think that can be achieved? Yeah, we have to talk to ourselves. And are you going to talk to yourselves? Well, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are on it. We are, we are on it. But it's not one day ago. This structure was the first house built here in the water in the 1980s. The lake has shrunk by 22 metres over the years, suggesting clear evidence of climate change. So Fred, how do you control pollution in the area? Well, sometimes we wake up early hours in the morning, so we patrol. We used to put some dustbins along the shore uh -huh. so that people would not throw rubbish and so on, because rubbers are dangerous. About 15 to 20 years ago, the community here started cutting down the trees to build houses. About 10 years ago, they realised the impact this had on the lake as it reduced in size over time. Just five years ago, they started planting new trees as a reforestation programme. It may be the only way to save this lake. I contacted UNESCO to register Lake Bosom Chui as a UNESCO World Heritage Site as a measure to preserve the lake and gain further tourist attraction. UNESCO's response is still outstanding. Is new governance really the key to solving the problems of education and job opportunities for the youth? Stay with me as I explore deeper into the Abono community to find out more.